on the World Stands Up. Nick Duty, Rich Voss, Simon Munnery, Sarah Colonna. I have to tell you, it is so great to be here tonight. This is a big night for me. Um, this is actually my first time to be performing stand-up pregnant. So, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm doing another set tomorrow night. It's just by then I won't be pregnant anymore. So... <laughs> My sister, uh, she has a kid, so I babysit occasionally um, with, with police supervision. <laughs> Just so you guys know, apparently, if you are ever babysitting and uh, you're playing hide and seek with a child and while he's hiding, you leave and go to happy hour, <laughs> kids get scared, so. In my defense, he was perfectly safe, perfectly comfortable, in the closet that he chose to hide in. <laughs> and just to be certain, I locked the door. <laughs> so not my fault, the whole neighborhood found out. I was like, I'm not the asshole that gave him a cell phone and taught him how to dial 911. <laughs> Kids are growing up so fast, using phones at 11. It's weird. <laughs> my sister also uh, wouldn't allow me to have my, my nephew in my apartment unless I child-proofed it. So I did, I did. And then she came over and got all mad because apparently she didn't mean lay newspaper down all over the floor. <laughs> she was like, you need to lock your cabinets, you need to get rid of all that alcohol. Who has that much alcohol? And you need to hide anything sexual. I was like, listen, my cabinets are empty, okay? I don't have anything. Um, the liquor is there, you know, in case I have company. And I was like, if he finds my vibrator, I'll give him 20 bucks, okay? Because I have been looking for that thing for months. <laughs> I, uh, I date a lot. <laughs> and I went on a blind date. Um, when you're set up by a friend, it's okay, but they have to call you the next day, and I hate that. My friend called me, and she's like, how'd it go? You know, did you like him? Did you guys kiss? I was like, we kissed a couple of times, you know, while we were having sex. <laughs> I've been kind of rude not to, don't you think? <laughs> he is a friend of yours, I'm gonna treat him right. <laughs> She's like, oh my God, you guys, you guys, you guys had sex on the first date? I mean, you must have really hit it off. I was like, oh gosh, yeah, he was, pretty annoying. Um, I don't know if you guys realize this, but if a woman has sex with you on the first date, it does not necessarily mean that she likes you. It usually means that she doesn't. It's like, well, this didn't go in anywhere, so might as well just get some sex out of the deal here. It's tough. I feel like I grew up in, uh, in the States, in Arkansas. I don't know if you guys know where that is. It's in the southern part of the United States. And um, it's a lot like London. It is, it's a lot like London. <laughs> it is. Um, if you were to sort of take London and just like, like wipe it out <laughs> and then put in kind of like chunky people in trailer parks then it's, it's just like London. <laughs> it's pretty much the same, like we're speaking the same language here. Um, but it's one of those places that everybody I went to high school with, they stayed there, they got married, they had a bunch of kids, and so not in that order. <laughs> so it's difficult. Because I go home and I run into them, you know, like I'll run into them in the grocery store and I haven't seen them in a while. It's like, what's up? And they're like, boop, not much. How are you doing? <laughs> what's going on? Stuff in Los Angeles, boop. I'm like, I gotta go. Can you just bag my groceries? Um, yeah. Oh. But they also, um, 
people there tend to, tend to gain a lot of weight. And last time I was home, I ran into this girl who used to be so small in high school, so small, haven't seen her. And she kind of waddled up to me and I was like, oh my God, I didn't know what to say. So I was just like, hey, how's your husband? You know, how's it going? How's he? She said, oh, he's not around anymore. And I thought, oh my God, she ate him. <laughs> And then I said, how are you? And she was having food stamp trouble. I don't know. Um, she, she said she had gout, which I don't know what that is, but gross, just let's keep that to yourself. <laughs> and then she said she had six miscarriages since we were in high school. I was like, I, I haven't seen you in 12 years. And I just said, how are you? You're supposed to say fine. <laughs> how are you? I'm gonna say fine. And that's fucking it. <laughs> Okay, because if I gave a shit, I would have called you 11 and a half years ago. There's only three subjects. Sex, death, and religion. I was shagging this dead priest the other day. Just finding the level. Uh, good evening, I suppose. What does it mean? You know, when you, when, good evening. It's something, somewhere between a wish and an observation, isn't it? You say, good evening. So you say, good evening, and they'll say, good evening. As in, that's established, let's move on. <laughs> so sometimes people cut it short, and they just go, evening, which is undeniable. <laughs> you know. Or sometimes you say, good afternoon, and they'll go, good morning, because you've got it wrong. <laughs> that happens. Uh, but it's, a bit, it's, it's even weirder as, as a, an entertainer to come on and wish you a good evening. That's a bit like a doctor coming on and going, you know, when you're ill, doctor coming up to you and going, hope you get well. <laughs> That's medicine. Anyway, I was... Uh, uh, sorry, is anyone here from anywhere? <laughs> anyone ever noticed anything ever? <laughs> Life, don't it drag on, hey? <laughs> don't you wish you were dead? <laughs> so uh, I was walking down the road... Uh, Walking down the road the other day. Uh, which road? It's all right, do my own heckles. <laughs> <laughs> Saves time, doesn't it? Uh, same road as ever. Think about it, all roads link up, don't they? There's only one road, topologically. If you can imagine a road that isn't linked to any other roads, it's not a road, is it? It's a runway. <laughs> and, uh, I was walking down the road and I, I couldn't help noticing how beautiful the world is. How absolutely beautiful. And I thought to myself, why would anyone in their right mind bother to take drugs? And then I remembered I was on drugs. <laughs> that was the reason. Recently, I've been trying to trace back my addictions. And I thought to myself, what was my first addiction? And I thought, of course, air. <laughs> uh, followed by milk. And like a fool, I mixed them. <laughs> and, uh, a couple of years ago, I gave up smoking. And I took up telling people I'd given up smoking. <laughs> as an alternative addiction, because, you know, you get a buzz out of it. Tell a friend, I've given up, they go, well done. Pat you on the arm, sometimes you feel good. But it's like a fag, where it's off after about five minutes, got to find another friend. <laughs> Pretty soon you're running out of friends, you know, just acquaintances. I've given up smoking, who are you, all that. <laughs> Turned out I hadn't given up smoking at all. I'd just taken up telling people. I was giving up between puffs. Oh, ooh, back on. <laughs> and I still smoke, but I cut down with the aid of this device. If you are a smoker and you want to cut down, I'll quit. I say, get one of these, a harmonica. She can't have a habit vacuum. You need something to do with the hands and the mouth. This fills that gap, right? Suck in, blow out. See? Instead of getting cancer, get a note. Very nice. <laughs> the thing I've discovered is harmonica players are actually less welcome than smokers at most restaurants. <laughs> it's, it's all over the world now. You know, no smoking in bars. Not only that, they won't let you take a drink in the tobacconists. You know, where's it going to end? No javelin at the opera? <laughs> anyway, uh, this one's called Stop the War. Stop the War. Stop the war or I'll keep playing. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, on that subject, I did go on that war march the other year, uh, the pro war one, not very well attended. <laughs> but we won. Mm. <laughs> uh, I've got children. Sounds a bit like I've got lice, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, 
might have lice, might be connected. The thing about children, you know, well, when we first born was born, once you've had children, take more interest in them. When my first born child was born, right, came out of the hospital, tiny little baby. Baby's really small, but they come with a lot of equipment. You've got a baby that size, you've got a room full of stuff they need. Like, <laughs> a special seat for the car, a cot, a pram, a thing that goes over them and dangles, sterilizers for their bottles. They're eating maggots off the carpet the next minute, but in between, you must sterilize their bottles, it's very important. <laughs> And, uh, you know, in a cot. They never sleep in the cot. Well, you start, they start the night in the cot by using their magical baby powers. By the end of the night, they end up in the bed. You think three of you in a bed, you all lie in lines when you make best use of the space. Babies rotate, so the feet press in the father's ribs and the head points towards boo-boo. <laughs> and we came out of the hospital, tiny little baby, and uh, we got in the taxi, and the, the taxi driver, as soon as we got in, we set off, the taxi driver goes, what is it, boy or girl? And I said, uh, girl. And he goes, oh yeah, I've got girls. You know they steal. <laughs> Since then, I've asked girls, you know, do you ever steal? No, 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 no. From your dad? Well, it's not stealing. <laughs>
And she said, I can't do this here either. So I knew where there was a hotel across the highway. It was like a little crack hotel, like 20 bucks, you know? It was a little dumb, dumpy crack hotel that you get for like an hour or two hours. I go, I know where there's a hotel. We pull into the parking lot of this hotel. This is true. There's not a car in there. So we're making out in the car, and then she gives me a, a hand job, right? And I have an orgasm. So now I have no motivation, really, to get the hotel room. <laughs> I swear to God, I said, okay, I'll be right out. And I walked into the hotel, and I came back to the car, and I went, they're all sold out. <laughs> there wasn't a car in the parking lot. She goes, there's no cars here. I go, yeah, they're all crack addicts. They walk. <laughs> well, anyhow, folks, listen to me. If you learn anything from this show, really stay in school. <laughs> and I mean this with all sincerity. If I offended anybody in any way, shape, or form tonight, you have no idea how much I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <Good night. laughs> it is a, it's a hard world out there, isn't it? And uh, I think sometimes, sometimes it's a good idea to just relax, forget about the, the difficult things in the world. The awful things in the world. Just, just think about nice things, happy things. Happy things like clowns. <laughs> There's nothing off-putting or disturbing about clowns, is there? <laughs> nothing that would make you wake up in a cold sweat, checking under the bed something, something that happened in your childhood you can't quite... Here's a song about clowns. <laughs> feeling blue, when life makes you feel sad, when trials and tribulations get you down. They'll always cheer you up, they'll always make you smile, those silly, funny, happy, wacky clowns. Suddenly life's not so bad, eh? <laughs> Some clowns are always happy. Some are always sad. <laughs> somewhere a smile, somewhere a painted frown. But no matter if they're fighting or smashed up in a car, <laughs> there's something makes you laugh about a clown. One clown sometimes follows me. He breaks into my home <laughs> and brings me dogs and rabbits that he's killed. <laughs> but he has a certain timing, and when he does it right, I laugh and giggle till I feel fulfilled. One clown wakes me up at night, blood stains on his clothes, and says, don't scream, I've killed your mum and dad. <laughs> but then I see his squirty flower and his silly massive shoes. And there is no way I could feel sad. <laughs> Sometimes I wake up to find clowns standing round my bed. One threatens me, another holds me down. The others hold their penises, <laughs> bulging in their fists. But as they come, I laugh because they're clowns. <laughs> There's one crouching on my toilet, eyes just like a snake's, and sharpened teeth, he runs his tongue around. He says he's going to rape my mouth and gut me like a fish. <laughs> But I laugh at his red nose cause he's a clown <laughs> So when I see the threats Daubed in blood on my front door Then I know that the circus is in town 
And I can't wait to see the ringmaster, the bearded lady too. The acrobats, the knife throwers, the animals like the zoo. But most of all those guys who cheer us up when we feel blue. They're never terrifying. They do not come from Satan. It was admittedly rather disturbing to find nine of them in a pentagram masturbating over dead rodents in my garage when I was five. <laughs> but hey, they're just silly, funny, happy, wacky clowns. 